I guess the part you've been waiting for is the actual invitation. So before we start, we're gonna pop some wax onto the burner and we'll just take a look to see what the finished design is gonna be. We're gonna start by measuring a backing card. And as you can see, we've got 17 centimeters high by 12.5 centimeters wide. So now we need to cut our printed invitation panel down to size. And we've just used handmade paper here so we need that to be 11 centimetres wide and 15.5 centimetres high. And like we did before, we're just going to put little pencil marks and we're going to use that as a guide just to tear the paper to get those lovely deckled edges. So we're just lining the ruler up now. And just like before, we're just going to grab one end of the paper and just tease it away from the ruler. So keeping the edge quite rough, we're just pulling the paper away and that should leave you with a lovely deckled edge. We're going to do the same across the bottom now. In there. So as you can see, it doesn't need to be perfect and those little imperfections actually add to the finished design in this kind of a range. What you can do is just use your fingers to just neaten it up slightly, but don't over neaten it because you still want those lovely uneven edges that add to the design. Once you've finished this part, you then need to stick it into place. So we're gonna use double-sided tape and we're just gonna add a section along each end and this is a little bit of a fiddle, but it's worth taking that extra little bit of time. And I normally add a section down the middle as well, especially with handmade papers, because it just gives it that extra security and just makes sure everything stays in place. So we're just gonna stick the final piece on now, and then we're ready to mount this onto the backing card. So try and keep your borders as even as you possibly can, and once you're happy with the positioning, you can then press it firmly into place and we're ready to move on to the pretty parts. So we're just going to take some dried flowers and like we did before, we're just going to play around with the arrangement until we're happy. So we're going to keep this one quite simple. I'm happy with these two. And we're just going to add a little bit of double sided tape and stick the flowers into place just to hold them ready for the wax to go on top. Now we need to carefully pour the wax over the top of the double-sided tape, making sure that all of it is covered. And again, you don't need to be too precise about this. If you try and get it roughly in a circle shape, when you add the wax seal, that should all fall into place. So just pop the wax seal on top, and then you just need to press it in firmly, get it into position, and then you can just leave it for a little while until it's dried. When the wax is dry, the seal should be really easy to lift off and you'll be left with a beautiful invitation. Each one is going to be slightly different, but each one should be something you're really proud of. So give it a go. It's really good fun. Now we're going to take a look at how to make this beautiful order of service cover. And we'll just add some wax to the burner and take a look at the design while that's melting away. We're going to start with the cover. And we're going to take the front piece of card and we're going to measure it and you can see that's 17 centimetres long and we want our binding to be in the middle 14 centimetres. So we'll use a ruler just to find the central point of the 14 centimetres and starting at the beginning we're going to put a mark every two centimetres, just a small pencil mark all the way along. Now we need to add the inserts. So we're just centralizing those on top and obviously normally they'd have printing on, but for now I just wanted to show you the design of the cover. So we're just lining that up so that the borders are even and then putting the bottom cover over the top. Once everything is nicely lined up, you then need to use the guides to punch holes all the way along the border of the card. So I'm going to use a big hole punch and this is something I use quite regularly but for you a small hand punch will work just as well. So you just need to line up the punch with the dots you've made and punch holes all the way along. As you're doing this try and hold it firmly so that all the edges stay nice and even and once you're finished you should have holes running all the way along at an equal distance and you can see they go right through to the back there. 
Now you need to add your string binding. So we're just winding off a long length of jute string and cutting it off. And what I find useful is if you dip the ends into the wax and just rub them with your fingers, that will give you a little bit of a point and it'll stop the string from fraying. And that just makes it a lot easier to thread it through the holes. So do that both sides because you will need to thread both sides through. Once that's done, you're ready to start making the binding. So just take one end of the string and just carefully thread it through the bottom hole. So starting from the front and working through to the back, we're just pushing one end through. And then once you're about halfway along the string, you're taking one end, passing it round to the back and feeding it through the next hole there. It's normally a little bit more fiddly from the back but you should be able to do it quite easily. And once that's done you just need to pull it tight and then start from the opposite end so the back piece of string pull through to the front hole and then feed it through. And what this does is create a sort of cross shape. And as you follow this pattern all the way along the edge of the order of service, you'll end up with this beautiful crossed binding that just looks really lovely when it's finished. So we fast forwarded that and we've just come to the last hole now. And you'll find you'll get quicker as you go along. But as you start, it is a little bit of a fiddle. So keep persevering. It is, it's essentially just like tying your shoes. Once you've finished your top hole, you're bringing both ends of string around to the front and then you're just going to tie a bow. So start with a knot, just like this, there, over and under, and then put your finger at the centre of a knot and tie another knot to make a double knot and this, this will just make it nice and secure for you. And then just make a bow. So you can use a loop, swoop and tack method or you can use a bunny ear method, whichever one you do. As long as you tease it into shape, it should work absolutely fine. And then just trim off the edges of the bow. And that's your binding finished then. So it's time to decorate, which is the fun part really, let's face it. We're going to make a start by cutting the top panel down to size, but we need to measure before we start. So the order of service cover is 17.5 centimetres by 12.5 centimetres. So we're going to take the front panel down to 14 centimetres high and just put a small pencil mark down. And then we're going to take it to three, cent three and a half centimetres shorter to nine centimetres. And we're going to put a mark there each side of the nine centimetres, making sure we keep the text right in the centre of the nine centimetres. So we just put in a dot either side as a marker. And now we need to tear the front panel down to size. So we're just going to use our dots as a guide and line the ruler up. And just like we've done before, we're just going to tear the edges quite roughly. Try not to hold them too tightly against the ruler, so just tease them along until you've got a lovely deckled edge. And we're going to do this all the way round using the dots as a guide. The beauty of this is if you're holding your ruler firmly in place, you really can't go far wrong because if you don't pull it tight enough to the ruler, you can correct it later. I would say the one thing to watch out for is that you don't tear too closely to the ruler because otherwise you'll end up with a really flat edge. And that, it works, but it doesn't work as well. The deck edge just works really nicely. So I'm just neatening up this edge just by hand and just pulling away some of the excess paper there. And you can see that fits really nicely on top of the order of service cover. So now we just need to stick it into place. We're going to add double sided tape across two of the long edges. So we start this side and just press it into place. We're going to do the same on the opposite edge. And then just for extra security, we're going to add a strip along the middle and that will just hold everything into place nice and securely then. So once we've got the double sided tape in place, we can press it onto the front of our card. So be careful as you position it, making sure the borders are as even as you can possibly get them. 
And once you're happy, you can just press this firmly into place and then you're ready to start the actual design work. So you need to take your bunch of dried flowers and just start picking things at work. And with nature, because everything is different, you'll need to accept that not all your stationary range is going to be identical. There are going to be little differences between everything, but the key thing is trying to make them all look like the same range. So you can play around a little bit, you can cheat a little bit just by trimming things down, trimming some um, lumps and bumps off and just trying to make them look as similar as possible. So I'm just layering these three fronds in and I'm going to add those into the background. And actually, I think that's enough for the order of service. So we're going to leave it there. And like we've done before, we're going to trim that down and then we're going to add double sided tape just to hold that into place as we add the wax. Leave a gap between your order of service wording and your tape just to make sure that the wax seal doesn't overlap the wording as you as you make it. And then you can just press your dried flowers into place on top of the double sided tape. And this gives you a chance to arrange them in the way you want. So we're just pressing that down. It's not going to give a really firm hold, but it will just give us something to just secure the dried flowers as the wax dries. So there, we're just going to rearrange this a tiny bit just to make sure it's not overlapping the wording. And then we're just going to use the scissors to trim off any overlapping edges. And then we're ready to add the wax seal. So we're going to take the melted wax and we're going to pour it over the top of the double sided tape. Again, try and get it roughly in a circle, but your wax seal will sort that out. So make sure it's upright, press it into place. You can jiggle it round a little bit while the wax is still hot. You can also move the flowers around and then just leave it set. So leave it for a few moments. When the wax seal is ready, you should be able to lift it off quite easily. And then you've got a finished order of service. You've probably noticed that they do take a little bit of time to make, but look how beautiful it is. It's definitely worth it.